Right then, what's happening people? I thought we'd do a quick little video because I'm just doing a bit of maintenance on a decent sized site to be fair. It's all Mitsubishi electric kit and that there, that's the maintenance checker um, for the city multis for the VRF kit. You can plug it anywhere on the Mnet. So there's a central controller up there. I've just plugged it onto the Mnet in there if it's easier. And then, uh, obviously, we've got it hooked up to the laptop. And I've just come across this. So, um, address 35, and this unit, it's in heating, heat on, uh, the set point at 25. Now, you'll see there, look, the LEV, it's open 1800 pulses, so it's wide open. I'm trying to get some in there, but as you'll see there, look, there's nothing going in, 20.9, 22.4, so although it's asking the LEV to open, nothing's happening. So I thought we'd uh, delve into this one, just have a quick look. Um, I don't know where this unit is yet, I'm going to have to hunt around for it, but I suspect it's going to be the LEV motor at fault. Uh, I could be wrong, but that's my guess anyway, so we'll go and have a look um, and I'll catch up with you guys in a minute. Right then, well, unfortunately at the minute I can't get into that room and I can't get access up to that unit, but I found an old unit knocking around in the plant room. So what we're going to do, we're going to strip this down and I'm going to show you what I think that the fault is just on this unit here. So this is a, uh, what we've got, we've got P-E-F-Y, P-A-T, V-M-M-E, obviously it's a Mitsubishi Electric. It's a concealed ducted type system, so that there is where you would duct onto, so the air's gonna come that way. That's obviously your air filter, your fans and your motor in there. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna strip this down, I'm gonna get this sort of drying pan off. Um, I'm gonna get that off. I think we're gonna get that panel off there as well and what we're going to do we're just going to expose the other side of that coil and i'll show you what i think the problem is right then the first screw you're going to want to attack is that one down there you can see that that's going to hold that drip tray onto the chassis so we'll get that one whipped off right then so once we've got that screw off down there Usually you'd be able to just pull this across, so that will come out of there. And then you're gonna to wanna to get that down that gap there. So it might take a little bit of persuasion. All right, finally got that through there. So once that's out there, that's out of that one. You should just be able to wiggle it off like that. Pull it over to the one side. And then that's your drain pan. And then that's gonna expose six screws so we'll whip that cover off there and then hopefully that's going to get me where i want to be all right then there's our screws so this is now loose you should just be able to give that a pull and then that's going to come off and then that there is exactly what i wanted to expose so i'm sure you already know but uh, that there is the lev um, so, I'm sorry, that there is the LEV body, and that there is the LEV motor. Um, you can get to it through that panel there, so if I flip you around, you'll see there's a screw there, and then probably unscrew that and then pull that out. Um, but I've tried on a number of occasions to swap this head through that panel there and I'll just end up losing my rag and throwing my tools everywhere because you just can't get enough grip on the LED body to get the head off so this is the easiest way I know it's a bit of a nose when this is up in the ceiling but that there is what I think the fault is I think that motor's failed so it's not opening up that LED what I'll do I'll get some spanners and then I'll show you how to take this off Right then, we've got a couple of tools, got a coffee. So, 19 mil, that's gonna get you around the LEV motor head. So, 
you see that sort of nut in there you can use a 90 mil on there and then if you look at the body itself as you can see but it's like flat that side and that side um, I've just grabbed a Nipex pliers wrench so just hold the body tight um, unscrew the head no refrigerant's going to come out of here well it shouldn't if it does you've got a serious problem and you're going to want to change the body but we'll quickly whip that off now All right then, there we go. That's the body there, so basically, you'll see there, look. That will go up and down if you push it. It's spring-loaded, um, so you can always check that that's not stuck and it does move up and down. You see some like, thread sealer they put around there. And then, obviously, this is the motor, so you'll see there, look, that pin pretty much wound all the way out so that'll be closed and then as that as that sort of drives back in um, you should see it sort of winding it's got to open up the valve now if you've got one that's sort of stuck out like that and it says it's asking for 1800 pulses um, as you start winding that off there you'll start hearing the refrigerant start passing as that starts opening up as that plunger rises and you'll feel the heat um, sort of pass past that if you've got it in heating mode so yeah just wanted to show you what it looked like I know some people haven't done these I know a lot of you experienced guys probably done loads of these but you'll find these on um, Daikin VR V2s now there's three of these controlling the outdoor expansion valves when I went on the Daikin course sort of years ago they actually only give these uh, a certain shelf life I think it's eight years so if you come across sort of a Daikin VR V2, you open it up and they haven't been changed. So still got the original cable ties on. It's probably a wise idea to tell the customer they need changing. Um, this kit's over eight years old, so you know chances are a few of these are probably going to start failing. You'll see in there. Look, there's like uh, I don't know what it's like a lubricant, and that goes all hard as well sometimes. So. That's how you whip them off anyway. Obviously, that lead will run uh, into the board in there, so you'll need to unplug the lead. Uh, pop it off, get your new one, just screw it back on, reverse process. That was all, just wanted to give you a quick look at um, an LEV. Obviously, I can't get to this one that's in fault, so hopefully I'll be able to come back and check that one out. Right then, just before I go, I'll put this one back together, but. Um, if you come across one you think's faulty, probably the best thing to do first is unplug it out of there and then if you download the service manual for whichever unit you're working on, I mean it might not be Mitsubishi, it might be something else, but if you look through the service manual it will show you, well it should show you a section for the LEV and then it will show you certain resistances. And so I'm just going to quickly show you, this is a manual, it's not for that particular unit, uh, but if we scroll down somewhere, it should, there we go, look. Expansion valve coil LEV and it's going to tell you which colours to test and the resistance that you should find yeah so that's the information you're going to want to look for just check that first before you whip the expansion valve off you can unplug that and you can check the resistances across the sort of coil in that head in the motor um, you might find that you'll be able to check that it's failed um, just through doing that so you know you might have if it's burnt out if the coil's burnt out you'll be able to see it just through testing the plug so you won't have to do all this um, just to just to check it i'm going to leave it there as always if you like the video please hit the like subscribe and share uh, i know i haven't dropped a video for a while but i've got a few in the pipeline i've got a few lined up so uh, a few different tool bag and tool videos as well so if you're interested in that then uh, hit the little bell icon as well and you'll be notified when i drop them take it easy